and welcome to the Magnum episode. That's right, it's Ponery's Kicking It Old School, episode 44. Now you know why I called it the Magnum episode. Sometimes a man's just got to know his limitations. Anyway, we are still in the shop. At the inn in Raglan. And we're not supposed to talk to anybody. Like, there's gossip here. The more Adele approached them, apparently satisfied with their story about being mercenaries from Quegg. Queeg? They're called Queegians, so let's just call them from, from Quegg. <laughs> the more Adele told him that he was a trader who made frequent trips to several of the towns located near the border between the kingdom and the Northlands, explaining his command of their language. What can you tell of the push south? asked James. Word has it that Captain Claudric received his final orders for the move against Northward. Feudal. With our numbers, we have no hope of surviving the march to it, and then breaching the walls. The Kingdom Baron will crush us utterly unless, en unless the engineers come up with something. Trying not to be too interested, James prodded the Mordell further. Sagerson? The Mordell stared at them strangely. I had heard he was killed in a Quijian battle near Palenk. I wouldn't know, James recovered casually. I've not been on foot for eight years or more. I've been working in a press gang. Hmm, the Morodell replied. Well, it's all a moot point at the moment anyway. Claudric has locked himself into his commandeered command post to work on the battle plans for a goblin offensive, and the engineer just sits in the house drawing up designs. Hopefully the kingdom won't elect to retaliate after this madness is over with. They thanked him for the information he was able to provide and casually strolled back to a spot near the tavern door. James approached this Moradell. He had them suspiciously, then shrugged. Though he spoke to them in the kingdom tongue, his speech was broken and somewhat slurred. You've been hired by Nerv's brother? What's his name again? Na Nago? Asked the Moradell. James nodded his head. Yes, we are mercenaries from Queeg. Queeg? Queeg. Queeg. Just arrived. What news of you the thrust, thrust south? Moradell lowered his head and whispered. They say Captain Claudric... Craud... Craudic? Craudic? has got final orders for the move against Northward, and beyond that, I ain't got the faintest what's going on. Resigning himself to the fact that the Moradell had nothing more of value to tell them, James remained for a short while to listen, not wanting to attract undue attention to themselves. At least, at last, he excused himself from the table. We're done here. We're done here. So in the meantime, what I had done was I had read the books. Now his... Wow, his barring's up to 82. His barring's up to 52. His crossbow's up to 80 and his barring's up to 51 because I read the... I gave him a complete book to read. Now I can go back to the shop. And we can sell off the, rem the remnants of the book. You may be wondering why I'm carrying an extra crossbow. On well, last episode, I sort of explained I have three warriors and three ma three magic users. So I wanted my extra warrior, uh, Gorath, to be able to have one of these. So what I have to do is I have to plan a way to stash this crossbow somewhere on the map that he can get to it later. And that's my challenge. So anyway, we're done with that. We're done with the inn. Save often. Check the other houses. No one's lived in here. Expect the Amordel. They were a bit surprised to see a large bull of a man that came to the door. He eyed them suspiciously and then spoke. Mother of Iship, look at this. Kingdom dogs looking for a bone, he sneered at Patris. Then with a snarl, you'd best go back to where you belong. There ain't no work here for the likes of you. Now get! Rather than provoking a fight that could attract the whole town, Lockley agreed they should leave. What? Are we tired? No. We're fine. It's the beginning of the damn day. Seems like a spoof. Okay, maybe it's not a spoof. What we're looking for 
Actually, I should be able to do it with Patris's skill. Is it that? Hmm. No, that's just a tent. Yeah, money. From what I remember, it still doesn't say they're tired. You're supposed to... oh boy. Bastard! No, you don't get to run. Uh-uh. Nope. <laughs> Come after my magic user and then expect to run away. Bullshit. <laughs> Looks like all the soldiers are bought off. But yeah, we need to keep that. Small miracle we didn't get poisoned. Oh, he's full already. Cast a spell to detect trap chests. This one? Not trapped. There's a bunch of chests here. Save first. Yes. Cool. And there's our gear. Save often. Okay, now 
we retreat back to the catapult. Which is right here. Locklear took a deep breath, holding the catapult part they'd found in the box and using some makeshift tools he kneeled before the machine set to work. It took nearly two hours to install the part. <coughs> and though Locklear wasn't positive the machine would work at all, he stepped back to admire his handiwork. I'm not an engineer, but I think that should work, he said, motioning the others to come join him. <coughs> Together they stood before the strange wooden creature, its one arm poised, ready to fling its special cargo into the sleeping Moradell town of Raglan. Shall we give it a try? Should we? <clears throat> I mean, we did fight our way through the town. And now we have gotten to the other side, and we have a part. Don't you think we ought to try it? Yes. <clears throat> Patrick backed away from the catapult. Wiping his forehead with the back of his hand, Lockwear bent down to grab the wooden handle that would bring the monster to life. I know you couldn't see it, but that thing flung very quickly. James placed a hand on the wooden monster. It was a marvel of Moradell engineering and short on artistic value, something that marked a difference between the Moradell and their elven cousins. It showed signs of precision craft and craftsmanship. <clears throat> Fitting we could turn their weapon against them, Locklear said. Though they had already done the damage that they had come to do, James wanted to watch the machine work one more time, so I flung it twice. So somewhere over here is a destroyed house now. Somewhere. One of these is destroyed. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. That's just the inn. Huh. Maybe it wasn't the houses. There it was. <clears throat> the door was ajar. Lockley tried to enter the small house, but something seemed to be blocking the door. He pushed a little harder, and reluctantly the door swung open a little further. Peering into the darkened room, they could make out the form of a male Mordell on the floor. Kraldick's body was curled into a fetal position, and he appeared to be clutching at his throat. The engineer knew his business quite well, he said. The catapult load seems to have been very effective. Search the room quickly. After several minutes of intense examination, Patris called out, I think I found something. Behind a wooden writing desk in the corner was a sword of Lim's Kragma, a small pouch with 150 gold coins, and a set of company orders. This would put a kink in the Morandell attack plans. We've got too much stuff. <clears throat> this sword is badass. So, who do I want to wield it? This is 2045. This is 36 and 52. Well, guess who's getting it then? Yup. What do I not need in my inventory? I mean, I can do this, right? Yes. And then I can do this. So I'm stacking effects, right? Like so. And I can put this over here. And then I can grab that. And then put that in James's hands. Woo! Hold on, we got ourselves a badass over here. Save often. Now I think we just need to get the hell out of the Northlands. I think we're done here. Because I don't think we're allowed to cross the bridge. Because if we did, we'd be going to Cairn, and then down to Wyke, and then down to High Castle. I don't think that's allowed. I think that is verboten. So... Let's just find out. Why not? We've got time. Let's have a little fun. Oh wait, I'm already heading back. <laughs> Never mind, I guess we're not going to head back. We're just going to go get the hell out of the Northlands. Oh, 
move you. Now we're back to the green of the world. I have to go back to the Duke of Martin, if I'm not mistaken. Locklear took a water pouch out of his pack and leaned over the well. A strange smell invaded his nose as he sniffed it, again suspiciously. It seemed to be coming from the well. He leaned over even more and tried to focus his gaze on the water below, but could not distinguish it from the murky darkness. As Patris approached, he held up a hand to stop him. I do not think this is ordinary well water. Are you going to try to drink some, asked Patrick's? No. Putting away their water pouches, Locklear noticed something he hadn't seen before. A small dead bird next to the well. I believe we've made the right decision, he said. This well is poisoned. And the goblins let us by. Alright, so now we go back to the Duke. Should be down here. Things are not going well at all. I've started to get reports from some of our scouts. Alright, that's the same dialogue every time. We got the plans for you, Martin. Too bad you didn't come with us, though. We had quite a bit of fun. Won't be much time for that very soon. My gut instinct tells me that they'll begin the assault in the next few days. Before we go back to the castle, there's something I would like you three to check out for me. I've got this mysterious note from someone that said a company of Moradell illusionists have slipped behind North Warden. I thought Patrice would know how best to deal with them. Just like those pointy-eared lily munchers to go stealing my ideas, Baron Gabbett had me working on something like that, but I could never get the kinks out. I knew my tongue was itching for some reason, but if we run across them, I got something that'll fix the hindquarters in a bat's fart. Whoever wrote the note doesn't specify where they're supposed to be located, so if you three would just take a swing southwest and see what you can find, once you're done, come back and we'll all head to the castle together. Well, at least that answers a few questions. We'd best be getting back to the battle in order. Is there anything else you need at the moment? <clears throat> just for you to be careful. Right. So he wants us to go to southwest. Hmm... We already killed everything down here, though. How much crap are we carrying? Oh, yes. Let me let me turn around and unload all this crap first. Because I might not, I might not be afforded this opportunity in the future. Now it's somewhere I can probably get Gorath back to, to pick that up later. Hopefully. <coughs> Hopefully. Hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, Duke Martin. Okay, whatever. <clears throat> Are we wearing our Duke Mart Duke Martin boots? Her 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 her. <clears throat> Dead bodies everywhere. That was the place with the minstrel. <clears throat> I have a feeling way to prepare for a battle. Totally full health. I bet it's that barn back there. Like, I bet, no, it's, I bet it's this house back here. Oh, we couldn't get to earlier. Or not. <clears throat> that place is weird. You know, I don't... Oh! There's a house over there. I bet that's our target. I bet that's our target. Save often. Patrick stopped. James took a few more steps before he realized the magician wasn't with him and turned to find him staring off into the bushes with a comical, questioning look. <clears throat> Something ain't right about things here, Patrick said, turning in a slow circle. Ain't what they appears to be at all. <clears throat> and if in a thing that wasn't what it looks like, that means it's wearing some kind of mask. What are you babbling on about, Locklear asked. The invisible magicians, you donkey. Patrick shot back. Almost imperceptibly, his mouth began to move, silently forming words long forgotten. His lips began to move faster in sync with a secret, accelerating rhythm only he could know. Then he gave voice to the words, and they tumbled from his throat louder and louder until he was nearly shouting. James saw a strange shimmering in the air. He turned to look, and before his amazed eyes, he saw a huddled pack of Mordell spellcasters. Oh wow, there's six of them. Great! They froze him instantly! This is gonna go very poorly. I get the feeling we're going to have to do this over. That dumbass killed himself. The boys are frozen. That's the spell I want, but I can't remember what it's called. Oh, he's in a, these guys are going to die. Oh, I think his spell wore off. Nope. Nope. Man. You can keep attacking Patris, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine, as long as you're not attacking me, that's great. believe we survived that. Alright. Just to save us time and your sanity, we're going to do the hack seal. Okay. 
There we go. Oh look, more Fatimore's formula. That sword's pretty badass. What spells this? Wrath of Killian. Do I have that? Mm, no. Twenty-four. 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 Yes, you get to have. Them. five of them, so I have to go forward and then turn around. Wait a minute, I might have room for that. Yep, right there. Okay, we killed all the illusionists. Now... I need to head back. I have a feeling that was just for money anyway. <clears throat> Save, and then let's go find the Duke. Scratch one group of Moradel magicians. We found them, Duke. Good. I want you three to hurry ahead to the castle. They've already backed, turned back an irritation assault today, and I think the Baron could use your help right now. I need to find out what happened as soon as our scouts, or to one of our scouts that's gone missing. I'll be along as soon as I can. Okay. As far as I'm aware, that's the last part of what happens in this chapter. There was three missions that you do for the Duke. And, <clears throat> well, we still have half an episode to go, don't we? I guess we'll go ahead and do that then. Take you into chapter six. Might as well.
Here we go. The portcullis creaked. An ashen-faced soldier trembled as he labored at the monolithic peg wheel. His back arched backwards, taut as a bowstring, as he hauled the iron gate upwards. With a jerk of his neck, he gasped between clenched teeth for James and his companions to hurry inside. Within a handful of soldiers hurried to various tasks on the battlements, and panicked captains attempted to rally the surviving <clears throat> contingents of the day's fighting. Something's wrong, James muttered, observing the disarray. What's happened? Baron Gabbett's been murdered. That's what's happened, a nearby soldier shouted, glancing up from where he worked feverishly at unplugging a keg of oil. We found a bloody nest of nighthogs in our mist. They murdered the Baron's staff and three of the captains before we cornered them in a storeroom. Torch those corpses immediately, James ordered. They might be black slayers. Where's Duke Martin? Don't know. You're the closest thing we have to nobility at the moment. Guess that puts you in command, Seigneur. James said nothing as a rumble of thunder split the sky. Oh boy. Half-dead soldiers trumped past, their eyes hollowed with exhaustion as they traded places with equally worn men brought from the dining hall turned infirmary. A few men still possessed clothing unstained by blood. Dour with the turn of events, James eyed the horizon for any sign of help. In all likelihood, the Moradel would attempt to breach the wall today, and there was little he could do about it. Nighthawk treachery had silenced their cannons, and too many men had fallen in four days of heavy fighting. Attack! A voice screamed in the stillness. Attack! Men on the south face! James casted a fuming curse into the sunrise. He might die, but he would send as many more Adele as he could into the halls of the Death Goddess before he would go down. Right through the neck, bro! The more Adele thrashed. As life dimmed in his horrified eyes, he toppled backwards into a wooden balustrade. With an ear-splitting shriek, the railing sundered into the flying splinters, tumbled after his flailing feet as he disappeared into nothingness. Almost too dazed to breathe, James bolted to the wall to sight his fallen opponent. A crumpled heap of armor lay far below, splashed in gore and a spreading stain of red. Close by, a grim-looking figure lowered his crossbow and tilted up his shaggy, dark head to favor the seigneur with a rare smile. Arutha. There he is. About time you got here. I was beginning to believe you were going to miss all the fun. And of course the theatrics get stuck there. <laughs> Interesting. There we go. Delicon would think me impolite if I didn't attend his little party. How are the men? Very bad. Of the original garrison of 415 men, 227 are dead, 35 are mortally wounded, and the rest are afflicted with dysentery or are too exhausted to wield a sword. Your arrival came none too soon. No discourtesy intended, Prince, but why did you wait so long in coming? We all made haste, nearly to the point of calamity. Your well-meaning messengers bumped into trouble and nearly didn't win themselves free. Consequently, we didn't receive your word until it was nearly too late for us to respond. We were greatly fortunate to arrive as soon as we did. The Moradella in retreat? What few of them remain? By the accounts of my scouts, they think there may have been up to at least six companies in the hills. About that. Since they didn't have the decency to attack all at once, we couldn't tell. If our trackers are to be believed, four of those companies slipped out a week ago, while the other two kept your forces pinned down. The rest apparently turned to the southwest. Sounds like they mean to strike at High Castle. Undoubtedly, since the Moradel leader has mimicked many of the moves of his predecessor, predecessor Mermindanus has made, it stands to reason he may make many of the same mistakes. As a precaution, I split my forces and diverted, diverted half of them to High Castle. As soon as we're finished cleaning up here, I'll take the rest of our companies to engage them there. And here we are at chapter six. We still have half an episode to go too. Pug concentrated on the storm. I don't think you guys met Pug yet. 
Whitecaps curled on the face of the bitter sea as furious jags of lightning slashed down from a darkening sky. Far off, the wobbling sails of ships left in the troughs of gray waves, struggling desperately against the winds that threatened to shear them into ragged scraps. Fishermen and frenzied shipmasters busied themselves along Crondor's docks as they raced to batten down flapping hatches and prevent unsecured goods from pitching into the churning seas. Everywhere there were planks and hammers and ropes, but among the workers not a soul dared utter a word. Wrongness. Pug sensed it as clearly as he smelled the salt in the air, and it felt the hardwood railing under his hand. What had begun three days ago as a seemingly weak summer squall was intensifying into a threshing eye of violence. Within hours it would make landfall, doubtless bruising the livelihoods of many coastal towns, Crondor among them. Perhaps it can be tamed, Pug thought, his face twisting into a frown. More of a lesser path of fare, but it should be simple enough. Even as he extended his hand, the image of another storm formed in his mind unbidden, a terrifying storm that had raged over his head as he came into the greatness of his power in a far distant empire called Surin Surunani. A storm that had tested his right to be a member of the alien assembly of magicians. A storm that had rent upon the heavens and forever sent him apart from the other mortal men. Energy leapt from Pug's outstretched fingers into the heart of the storm, exploding within within it a glorious rainbow pattern that illuminated the clouds in a throbbing elemental display. Greenish bands of color danced in the sky as the wind began to abate, the torrential rains quickly softening to a mild patter as blue blasts of energy moved between sea and sky, gently the ocean stilled of its own accord. Satisfied that the threat had been reduced, Pug discontinued the spell with a slicing gesture and stepped back to watch the storm's progress. The sight eased his mind and allowed him time to mull over a series of issues, not the least of which was the ruined vacation that he, his wife Katala, and daughter Gamina had intended on making in Krondor. But like a lodestone to metal, he found his thoughts returning again and again to recollections of the Empire. Arrayed in the flame, the enemy comes to shriek his cadence on skeleton drums. For thunder's spite will raise our call, through down stall or shall crumble empire all, Mikala. A Sarani poet, I believe he was House Omichan. Onichan? <laughs> Omichan. House Min Minwanabi, reign of the 53rd light of heaven. Is there something you need to see me about, Mikala? I am busy. Busy? You have been behaving like a Nidra bull with a burr in his bit. I came to ask what has Pug of Stardock so distracted that he cannot find time to meet with his associate magicians. Has his reputation so inflated that a member of the Sirani Assembly is no longer worthy of his attention? I am sorry. Perhaps you are right. I have just been very preoccupied. I find myself obsessed with the storm. All week I felt it building over the bitter sea, and all the while I suspected that there is more to it than is immediately perceptible. It doesn't feel natural. Have you seen its like? I have seen its match in destruction. As I recall, you created far more havoc in Surunani when you disrupted my Emperor's Imperial Games. Several city blocks destroyed, countless lives lost. The Warlord cast down in dishonor. I had a feeling you didn't summon a rift door to chastise me about my lack of attention. What is this about, Makala? Your loyalties, Pug. While you claim loyalty to the Empire, you live your life under the influence of a Mitkemian king and took to uh, wife a thorough Highlander. Your judgment is suspect. From the day I left the Empire, my judgment and my loyalty ceased to be the concern of the Assembly of Magicians. I do what I see as best for all concerned. I see. Then is any act justifiable to that end? If it serves the common good, yes. Even if it violates an individual's rights? What do you wish for me to say, Mikala? You lead me as if I were one of your Nidra cows, and but I'm in no mood for your games. State your business. Very well. Your daughter Gamina has blossomed into a remarkable young woman. She's beautiful, gracious, and an honor to your house. Unfortunately, she is also a girl with remarkable powers. Your love for your daughter has led you to a grievous miscarriage of your duties. 
Why have you let her live? My estimation of a person's magical talents is not determined by their sex, Makala, and I refuse to murder my child to appease a barbaric tenant of the assembly. They have no authority in Mekemia. <coughs> in this instance, I believe they will choose to ignore the geography. At this juncture, the assembly is troubled. Surrounded by anti-traditionalists who embrace your Mekemian values, led in large part by Mara of the Akoma. <clears throat> Open defiance by as our most notable member could weaken our position within the Empire, and that is something we cannot afford. We would be forced to make you publicly comply. Although I'm equally wary of female abomination, I have no desire to see your daughter dead. I have acted on your behalf and placed her in exile until such a time we can agree upon her ultimate fate. Why didn't you consult me? Where have you sent her? Seek her if you wish, but it will avail you little. Your further interference will likely ensure that the assembly will carry out its order of death. They will be unable to kill her, however, if they cannot find her. It would be your advantage to leave her be. I will not content myself to sit here while the assembly banters about the value of my daughter's life. I shall find her and then tell your brethren to expect my visit. You embark on a dangerous road, but it is yours to take. Farewell then, Pug. Book of Macross. Find the Book of Macross. So this MFR shows up, criticizes you to your face, asks you why you didn't kill your own kid because apparently women can't be magicians especially if they're that powerful and then kidnapped her and will not tell you where he put her what a piece of shit <laughs> I guess we're supposed to talk to Katala the book of macros what do you think the message means <clears throat> I thought for a while that he intended for us to contact the magician named Macros, but it would be a feat impossible even for Pug to accomplish. Macros left Mekibian long ago, and all he left behind were his writings. And presumably this book of Macros would be among the books he left behind. Perhaps, but I cannot be certain. The library that Macros left on Sorcerer's Isle was vast, and it took us the better part of a year to move the bulk of it to the Academy at Stardock. Since that time, <clears throat> Some of the volumes have been lent out to various scribes so that they can be cataloged and transcribed. Then the book could be anywhere. Our new approach. Before he disappeared, did you know anything unusual that he may have said or done? As I said earlier, he had seemed agitated for some time. But yes, there was something. About a month ago, we were walking in the gardens outside of the palace, just the two of us enjoying the day when he suddenly halted us near sewer grate. When I asked him what was wrong, he said... Not all of the sheep are in our fold. Sheep? Forgive me, lady, but your husband seems to have an fearing penchant for the cryptic. Not ordinarily. No, when things are on his mind, but... Or, only when things are on his mind. But come, I must attend to... Uh, I must head towards Stardock and look for evidence of this book of macros there. Where will you two go? We go below to the sewers under Crondor. Owen, good lady, I believe the shepherds have an errant flock of sheep to find. So now we're in the sewers. Great. Great. Or at least we got a bunch of wicked stuff still. And we got our spider back. So that's cool. And we got our spyglass back. Well, <clears throat> let's see what's in the hacks box. Just out of curiosity.
There's a key. We'll take the money. We're good on lockpicks. Hmm. Are we good on restoratives? He is. He is too. Okay. Hmm. We're not going to take this. We'll take these later. So for now, we can leave all that. Let's drop off this naphtha. I really don't need it. This is taking up space. Technically, I don't need this. Or this. Or these. That'll do. Okay. So, let's zoom out. We've been through most of this already. It's my understanding we're supposed to look for some here. Let me just fill out the room. Yep. I don't think we have anybody to fight down here anymore. But I'm not going to assume that either. Pulse quickened as he saw a lone figure approach, but when it became apparent they were not being attacked, he relaxed a bit, squinted slightly in an attempt to see what was about to join them. Cat. Huh. You're not mockers. Who... Where did you come from? <clears throat> above, from the palace. From Crondor. From above? Then you're one of Pug's students. He sent you down to help us? No. I don't understand. Why are you here? We believe that Duke Pug knows of magicians who are living in the sewers under Crondor, and we need to speak to them about something. Would you know anything about them? I have no time for this. I have something that I have to find, and the mockers are making a thorough search of the sewers. If they find me, I'll be floating in the harbor at dawn. <clears throat> the mockers may be looking for you, but they aren't looking for us. If we find what you're looking for, we might be able to prevent your death. In exchange... You answer a few questions for us, and in half an hour you could be on the road to Sarth or Malak's Cross, or wherever you want to go. How do I know you don't have the Thieves' Guild lying in wait for me? You don't, but as you said, without our help, you're already as good as dead. As I see it, at least we can give you an option that doesn't end in a grave. Let's help each other. Tell me what you're looking for. A bronze statue. I believe it's called the Idol of Lassur. The crawler heard a legend from, Keshian years ago, from a Keshian years ago about this object. It's the initial reason that he started looking for the magicians to aid him, and it's reputed to endow its owner with the power over health. The legend has it, the idol was aboard a ship that went down near Crondor. But the crawler believes that it made it to dry land and was eventually buried here when this city was still Keshian. <clears throat> and if we bring you this statue, will you tell us what we need to know? My word, anything you need to know. Right. Well, my guess is it's the only place we haven't looked yet, which is that one. Thank you. 
Oh, save option. <clears throat> oh, it's Lim. You're in Mocker territory. I advise you to turn about and leave before I'm forced to do you a good bit of harm. Please. If you just answer a few questions for us, then we'll be out of here. Questions? The only thing that concerns me is getting the mess of the storm taken care of and getting us back to our collective feet. Ordinarily, we don't do objects <clears throat> to a storm now and then. It cleans the smell out, if you know what I mean. But this storm? It did us a piece, all right. Water came in from the seas and washed a score of us into the ocean. Destroyed our headquarters, ruined our plan to take care of a little local problem. And we almost had him. Him? Who did you almost have? The Crawler. That's who. Not that it concerns you anyway. Once we had the upright man out of his way, <clears throat> I guess he decided that it was time to come around and claim his prize. We had other ideas, of course. We had a handy little trap all baited for him. One such like he couldn't refuse. Would have had him scurrying back to the Sunset Isles or whatever else in the seven lower hells he came from. Unfortunately, the weather didn't cooperate with our little plan. Are any of your muckers magicians? No. At least none that admit it freely. Sooner cut a magician's throat than let him among us. But if truth be known, we would have welcomed this one past a few months. Some of the crawlers' men are magic types. Are they? Any of them left down here? Who's to say? We're still picking through our own dead, much less worried about what, uh, which of them are still here. Large portions of the sewers are collapsed. There's even word that a portion of the sea wall collapsed. It opened a new stairwell to a lower level of the sewers. What do you know of an object called the Idol of Lasur? <coughs> Some sort of kid story, isn't it? About a wizard or what gives you the power over the goddess of death or some such silliness? Why would anyone be looking for it in Krondor? <coughs> Part of the story, as I remember it, it was supposed to be... It's supposed to have hidden away in some deep and secret part of the sewers by this Keshin... what? <clears throat> Something like that. But it's not real. I can guarantee that. If it existed, the mockers would have found it by now. Well, I guess we're done with this guy. I think it's time we left, Owen. Do what you like, pointy ears. Just get out of the sewers before anyone decides to make a meat pie out of you. Believe me, I have no brain to say or desire to stay down here. I, for one, will be quite happy if I never see the underside of Crondor again. Goodbye, Lim, and good luck. Screw you, Lim. <clears throat> we have stuff to do. It doesn't involve a mouthy little freaking sewer rat. Now, I happen to know none of, none of these work. Oh, what we have here. Save often. <clears throat> what the hell was that? boys are accurate. <clears throat> Until they weren't. <laughs> nice! Owen don't take no crap from nobody. That was a good fight. He's not as weak as Patris. Money. Ruby. Money. Come on.
Oh yeah, this is all new. There's a body over there. There's a box over here. Scent of Sereg, where are you? Just a rope. Do I have one? Yes, I do. I think this will top it off, actually. Yeah. Bet these are spoiled. Oh, they're good. <clears throat> Take one. One. Save off. goes to nowhere. What a waste. It's a good way to waste part of your rope. Sometimes tam someone's tampering with this lock has done this lock in. They've broken the mechanism trying to pick it. No one will be getting through that lock with a key, pick locks, or otherwise. Okay, so that's a ruined lock. in circles. We've been here. Uh, we're going to have to find another way. Let's turn around. Hmm. Let's go this way, I guess. connected everything here. Okay, looks like we've already done this one. Yeah, let's go this way. something over there. Transport through these sewers is strictly prohibited. Right. <clears throat> you can rest when you die. We've been that way. I guess we we'll have to go this way. Looks like there's a left to be made here. I think they just connect the two rooms though.
Yeah. Turn around. Let's go this way, I guess. pads here. Nope. I think there's a hole up here too. supposed to find a lower level somewhere. I'll check this spot here. What's this? Skyfire. Do you already have this spell? Skyfire. Yep, we do. So there's no point in picking it up and just wasting space. <clears throat> Full armorer's hammer, though. I'll take that, and I'll take this. Okay. So, it wasn't a total waste. I think we've explored this entire cave, or this whole sewer. So, where's the lower floor? Again? Pretty sure we explored this entire place.
Well, at least I'm being thorough. What's that warning sign? Yeah. Still no paths to a lower level. Makes any sense. We've done all of this. We have filled in the entire place. Like, there's literally nowhere else for us to go. here either. It's just a hole. And it goes nowhere. See? Well, <clears throat> we're actually out of time for the day anyway. What I think I'll do is I'll try to see if I can find a guide map or something for this, because it we're supposed to find a lower floor here somewhere. We can't leave the sewers without it. So this was Ponery's Kicking It Old School, the Magnum episode 44. And if you like what you see, leave me a like. <clears throat> anyway, if you're new to my channel, welcome and subscribe. If you're a regular here, welcome back. Either way, maybe check out my other playlist and see if my other interest may be of interest to you. This is all I've got for you today. Next week, 45, the cult episode. <clears throat> we will try to figure out the rest of this cave, or sewer, and try to find this idol of Lassur for Cat. So until then, see you later.